Fistulae Fistulaineno is one of the most debilitating surgical conditions both for the patient as well as for the surgeon because of the chronic nature of the disease as well as the high chance of recurrence post-treatment. So let us in brief discuss about fistula in eno. So whenever we talk about fistula in eno, the first thing that comes to our mind is anorectal abscess because the two are closely related. So if we remember during the discussion of the anatomy of the anal canal, we discussed that if this is the anal canal and this is the internal sphincter, this is the internal sphincter, then comes the conjoined longitudinal muscle on either side and then comes the external sphincter. So very crude diagram, this is just for your understanding, that's all. So external sphincter, conjoined longitudinal muscle and internal sphincter. So the space between the two sphincters is called as the intersphincteric space and this space has the anal glands. The opening of the anal glands open at the anal sinuses within the anal column. So this is the anal gland, this is the opening of the anal gland and the duct of the anal gland will run in between. Now what happens whenever there is stasis of the anal gland. So there is some obstruction at the anal sinus, there is stasis of the gland, there will be the formation of an abscess. So collection of pus, there will be an abscess. This abscess can track in different directions. So we remember in uh, when we spoke about the anatomy of the anal canal, this longitudinal muscle coat, the conjoined, uh, the conjoined longitudinal muscle coat gives septas to the skin, to the mucous membrane, and to the pelvic fascia, so in all the directions. So the pus again can spread in all these directions and this can lead to the formation of an abscess in the intersphincteric space, in the submucosa, what is called as the submucosa abscess, in just deep to the skin, what is called as perianal abscess and it can even go to the levator space, the supralevator space, the pelvic abscess and it can go into the lateral to the external sphincter into the issue anal fossa. So this is the about the formation of a pelvic abscess, submucous abscess, issue anal abscess and perineal abscess. So why are we talking about all these abscesses in fistula in ano? We will come to that. So it is the most common organism that is found in case of a pelvic abscess, uh, nisho rectal abscess, uh, uh, submucous abscess and um, perianal abscess is E. coli. Commonly seen in diabetics and immunosuppressed, it is usually occurs when there is injury to the anorectum, any cutaneous skin infections, any perianal hematoma, a perianal hematoma which gets infected leading to the formation of an anorectal abscess, any surgeries and uh, inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's and also in tuberculosis. So all these are the causes of anorectal abscesses. So we already discussed there is obstruction of the anal glands, there is stasis of the collection, because of the stasis there is bacterial overgrowth, it leads to the formation of cryptoglandular abscess. Now this abscess can track in different directions, so it can go to the skin becomes the perianal abscess. It goes across the external sphincter into the ischiorectal fossa or ischioanal fossa, it is called as the ischiorectal abscess. It can go in the intersphincteric space, it can go just deep to the submucosa, it becomes the submucosal abscess and it can go upwards into the pelvis and then it is called a pelvic abscess. So this diagram will give you a better idea. So just below the submucosa, submucosal abscess, goes into the pelvic, pelvic abscess, ischiorectal abscess in the ischioanal fossa and just deep to the skin, perianal abscess. So patient will present with the tender throbbing swelling in the perianal region. There will be redness, fluctuation may or may not be present. 
always when we talk about abscess we talk in terms of whether fluctuation is present or not but in two areas we don't depend upon fluctuation one is the breast and the other is the perianal region because if you wait for the abscess the collection has to be that large to form an abscess so fluctuation may or may not be present the digital rectal examination may or may not be possible in the case of perianal abscess because it there will be severe throbbing pain and the patient may not allow us to perform a digital rectal examination. What is the treatment? Now we know that there is some form of abscess in the perianal region. The treatment is incision and drainage by placing a cruciate incision. So in the most dependent part or the most fluctuant part of the abscess, a cruciate incision is placed after the patient has been placed in a lithotomy position all the pus is drained, there will be thickened loculi, so the loculi also have to be broken, the entire cavity is cleared out and then sterile dressing is placed if there is any bleeding, antibiotics are given, sitz bath is prescribed, bulk forming supplements that is so that the patient does not have constipation and analgesics are prescribed. So perianal abscess, this is the cruciate incision as close to the anal canal as possible so that if in future there is a chance of developing a tract that does not develop. So this is the treatment of anorectal abscess. We are talking about fistula in ano but we just finished the treatment of anorectal abscess. So why did we discuss about uh, anorectal abscess when we are discussing fistula in ano? So fistula in ano. Fistula has two openings. So, persistent communication between the anal canal and the perianal skin. Persistent communication between the anal canal and the perianal skin. So, again, if we go to our diagram of the anal canal with the internal sphincter, the conjoined longitudinal muscle. the external sphincter. So, fistula is the abnormal communication between the anal canal and the skin. So, there is a tract that forms between the two and the focus, the main focus that started the abscess, that started the fistula might be an abscess in one of the regions that we have discussed. So it can be following spontaneous or surgical, spontaneous or surgical drainage of the perianal abscess. So there was a perianal abscess there. It was either burst out spontaneously or the drainage that was done was inadequate. This resulted in further collection of pus. The pus has to come out in some way. It tries to come out in all direction. So the easiest way it can come out is one near the anal canal and one through the skin. And that is when an anorectal abscess develops into a fistuline ano. So cyclical pattern of pain and swelling. It can be either cryptoglandular or non-cryptoglandular. So coming to the cryptoglandular hypothesis, we have already discussed but we will brush through quickly. So we know that there is an, this is the external sphincter, this is the internal sphincter, this is the conjoined longitudinal muscle. So the space between the two is the intersphincteric space and it contains fat and loose areolar tissue. The part lateral to the external sphincter is the issue anal fossa and that again contains loose areolar tissue. The dentate line separates the lower part of the anal canal from the upper part of the anal canal. So the anal glands, they secrete mucus, they lubricate the anus. There is some infection in these glands which leads to intersphincteric abscess, blockage of the draining ducts by the infected debris which may resolve spont either spontaneously or there is you have to drain the abscess. So if this drainage, incision and drainage has not been done adequately or if there is no drainage at all, the abscess bursts open through the skin or the anal canal into the anal canal, it leads to the development of fistula in ano. So again, 
to breast through, we saw that this is the submucous abscess. It can go, intersphincteric abscess, it can go medially, it can become a submucous abscess, it can go laterally, it can become the issue anal abscess, go upwards, become the pelvic abscess, and downwards, perineal abscess, perianal abscess. So that is the different directions in which the abscess can go. So how do you classify fistulas? The fistulas are classified into subcutaneous. This is called as the Milligan Morgan's classification. Then comes Parks classification. This Parks classification is very important. We will discuss that with the pictures. So first Milligan Morgan, subcutaneous, just below the skin, low anal in the lower part of the anal canal, 4 centimeters of the anal canal in the lower 2 centimeters high anal that is in the upper part of the anal canal just above the dentate line below the anorectal ring and pelvirectal high above the anorectal ring. Then comes Parks classification. It is divided into intersphincteric, transphincteric, supralevator, extrasphincteric. We will discuss each one of those. And then comes low level and high level again when we are deciding the type of surgery this becomes important low level fistulas fistulas that open into the anal canal below the anorectal ring high level fistulas which open above the anorectal ring so you can see here the different abscesses so this is the issue anal abscess so perianal abscess pelvic abscess all these forming fistulas tract so Coming to Parks classification, first was the intersphincteric fistula. So, external sphincter, internal sphincter. So, an abscess may be found here, and a fistula has two openings internal opening and external opening. This is the skin, and this is the anal canal. So, this tract goes between the two sphincters and from the skin up to the anal canal. So that is the intersphincteric between the two sphincters. Next comes transphincteric. So external sphincter, internal sphincter, skin, anal canal. The tract goes from the skin through both the sphincters, transphincteric, through the external, through the internal and opens into the anal canal. Transphincteric fistula. Then comes supralevator uh, fistula or supraspinctric fistula that is it goes above from the skin external opening goes above the external sphincter comes downwards pierces the internal sphincter and opens into the anal canal so supralevator sphincter and extra sphincteric so extra sphincteric does not involve both the sphincters so goes well above the external sphincter goes well above the internal sphincter and then opens into the rectum above the anorectal ring it is called as the high fistula so that was about Parks classification. Then we classified into low level fistulas and high level fistulas. So this is the anorectal ring. So if this is the rectum, this is the anal canal. This is the anorectal ring which divides the rectum from the anal canal. So this is that ring. So any fistula which has an internal opening at the anorectal ring or above is called as high fistula and any um, um, fistula in ano that has an internal opening below the anorectal ring then it is called as a low level fistula. So you can see here pelvirectal fistula. So it is going above the anorectal ring. So it is a high level fistula. Submucosal fistula. When it is below the anorectal ring, it is again called as low level fistula. Subcutaneous, again low level fistula. Anything that goes to at the anorectal ring or above it is the high anal fistula. Anything that occurs below this anorectal ring is called as a low level fistula. So what are the clinical features of low level fistulas? First we will come to low level fistulas, then we will go to high level fistulas because the treatment for the two are different. So there will be seropurulent discharge. 
so the fistula tract there will be continuous discharge so there will be zero purulent discharge because of the zero purulent discharge there will be irritation of the skin around the perianal region there will be multiple external openings there can be an abscess so that abscess may not have resolved so that abscess which had initially caused the fistula will still be present and issue rectal fossa if it is an issue rectal abscess issue anal issue rectal abscess on one side that can communicate with the issue anal fossa of the opposite side because there is a communication between the two behind the rectum and anal canal and it forms a horseshoe fistula horseshoe fistula so no discussion about fistula in ano is complete without talking about good salts rule so what exactly is this good salts rule so good salts rule is mainly used to detect where exactly is the internal opening in a fistula in ano and what kind of tract is present so first thing is done is patient is placed in lithotomy position once the patient is in lithotomy position if this is the anal verge if this is the anal verge then a horizontal or transverse line is drawn through the middle of the anal verge dividing the area into anterior and posterior fine lithotomy position patient is lying down in lithotomy position this is the anal verge a imaginary line is drawn through the middle of the anal verge dividing it into anterior and posterior now if the external opening if the external opening is present anterior to this line anterior to this horizontal line within 3 cm within 3 cm of the anal verge then the track will be radial and the internal opening will be in the same line as the external opening i'll repeat if the external opening is anterior to the horizontal line drawn through the anal verge within 3 cm from the anal verge then the track will be radial and the internal opening will be in the same line as the external opening if the external opening is beyond 3 cm from the anal verge anterior to the line drawn through the middle of the anal verge then the track will be curvilinear and open posteriorly at 6 o'clock position so this track was opening anteriorly and this track was opening the internal opening is going posteriorly so that is when both the openings are anterior to the horizontal line what if the external opening is below or posterior to the horizontal line through the anal verge so whether it is 3 centimeters or more than 3 centimeters if wherever the external opening is the internal opening will be at 6 o'clock position and the track will be curvilinear when the external opening is below the horizontal line drawn through the anal verge so this is good salts rule so fistulas with external opening anteriorly within 3 centimeters they have a radial track with internal opening in the same line as external opening fistulas with exterior uh, external opening anteriorly more than 3 centimeters to the anus it has curvy linear course and opens posteriorly at 6 o'clock position fistulas with external opening posterior to the horizontal line it has again a curvy linear course and opens in the midline posteriorly so that is all about good salts rule how do you then diagnose once you have kept good salts rule in mind it is easy to diagnose a case of fistula in ano you can palpate for the cord like structure that is the track between the external opening and internal opening how do you confirm once you know that it is a case of fistula in ano there are some investigations so first one is barium enema x-ray barium enema is given per rectally to the patient that enema the contrast agent will go through the internal opening through the track and come out through the external opening and that can be examined radiographically the other way of doing the examination is fistulogram fistulogram can be either x-ray fistulogram or mr fistulogram or using an mri where 
a dye is injected through the external opening, it goes through the track, comes through the internal opening and then it is visualized on x-ray or MRI so that you know exactly where is the track. Now endorectal ultrasound is one of the newer modalities which can be used where the probe is passed into the anal canal and the tracts are looked for, the uh, fistula in anal tracts. Uh, methylene blue can be injected into the anal canal to look for any track because it will go along the track and you can see the track. The discharge that is coming from the fistula has to be sent for investigation to rule out diseases like tuberculosis, biopsy from the tract again to rule out tuberculosis, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease have to be done. So what are the goals for treatment? Yes, you want to treat the disease. So what are the specific attributes of the disease that you have to tackle? So first one is eliminate the septic focus. We know that there was an abscess which began this whole process of fistula. So that abscess has to be tackled. So we have to keep it in mind that along with the fistula, the abscess has to be completely drained. Remove or ablate all the epithelialized tract. We cannot miss even one tract. The tract has epithelial lining. Epithelial lining will secrete. So even if you miss one tract, the chance of the patient will definitely have a recurrence because that uh, fistula will persist. Avoid or minimize risk of fecal incontinence. Whatever procedure you are doing in case of fistula in ANO, you are in close contact with the internal sphincter, the involuntary sphincter. If by mistake the sphincter is damaged, patient will have fecal incontinence. So that has to be kept in mind and prevent recurrence by doing an adequate surgery. So what are the things that you have to do? So first one is do a proctoscopy and try to visualize the internal opening. The external opening is visible. It is outside. The internal opening is the one that you have to look for whether there is any granulation tissue visible, whether the internal opening is palpable. During the surgery, the anal fistula probe is passed through the external opening, go through the track and come out through the internal opening. So to visualize the track, even methylene blue can be injected or hydrogen dilute hydrogen peroxide can be injected through the external at the time of surgery through the external opening which comes out through the internal opening and the track can be visualized. So what are the surgeries? So this upper one is called as fistula. Lectomy. So, fistulectomy, there are two surgeries. One is fistulectomy, and the other one is fistulotomy. So, as you know by the words, fistulectomy is excision, fistulotomy is cutting through. So, fistulectomy, in fistulectomy, a probe is passed through the external opening. This is the external opening. Here comes the internal opening. The probe goes from the external to the internal opening and then a circum circum incision, circ uh, circumferential incision is placed around the probe and it is go, the incision is deepened and deepened and it goes from the external opening up to the internal opening and the entire tract is excised as you can see here without damaging the internal sphincter which is there inside because if you cut the internal sphincter patient will have fecal incontinence. So this is what you mean by fistulectomy. The entire tract has been excised. What about fistulotomy? Same procedure. Not same. It can't be same. It is similar procedure. So a probe is passed from the external opening up to the internal opening but here rather than putting a circumferential incision and excising the tract the skin and the subcutaneous tissue is cut along the track, fistulectomy, fistulotomy, sorry. So it is cut along the track so that it is laid open. Once it is laid open, the track is cauterized. The epithelialized track is cauterized and it is allowed to granulate. So that is what you mean by fistulectomy and fistulotomy. The other method that can be used is by injecting fibrin glue into the external opening. This fibrin glue goes through the track up to the internal opening and it hardens and closes the track. So brushing through it again, first is fistulectomy, done in low anal fistulas. We are talking about low anal fistulas now. Done under general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia. A probe is passed through the external opening 
up to the internal opening. The fistula tract and the unhealthy granulation tissue is sent, excised. And then it is, the very important part is, the specimen has to be sent for histopathology to rule out diseases like Crohn's, tuberculosis, which might have caused the fistula in first place. So that is fistulectomy. Next comes fistulotomy, same procedure. Probe is passed through the entire fistulous tract an incision is made over the probe to cut and lay open the tract and then the tract is allowed to heal and granulate. So that is fistulotomy. And last comes fibrin glue, human plasma fibrinogen and thrombin is injected through the external opening, goes through the tract and it hardens within a few minutes. So that is about these surgeries. Next we come to an important surgery, a newer surgery done for an intersphinctric fistula. So if you remember Park's classification, we classified into intersphinctric, transphinctric, extrasphinctric and supralevator uh, fistulas. So for low level intersphinctric fistula, we do a surgery called as lift, L-I-F-T, ligation of intersphinctric fistulas tract. Simple, there is, there is a fistula in the intersphinctric space between the two sphincter. So you are ligating that. So it is called as ligation of intersphinctric fistula tract. So it is called as lift. How do you do it? So again, we go back to our crude diagram of the anal canal. So this was the internal sphincter. This was the conjoined longitudinal muscle. And then we came to the external sphincter. So this is the external sphincter. Now we have a fistula which is between the two sphincters, which is running between the two sphincters, the external sphincter and internal sphincter. So we have to ligate this tract. So for this, we put an incision in the perianal region between the two sphincters, between the two sphincters, there is a groove called as the intersphinctric space. So a transverse incision is placed between the two sphincters. The uh, incision is deepened and then once you reach the intersphinctric space, a probe is passed just like in fistulectomy and fistulotomy. A, a probe is passed from the external opening up to the internal opening. So now you are in the intersphinctric space. The fistula is in the intersphinctric space. The probe has gone through that intersphinctric space. So you will feel that cord like probe in the intersphinctric space. You visualize that. The, uh, the tract is visualized. And once you identify the tract, the ligature is put both at the external sphincter side and internal sphincter side, and the tract is cut. So you have disconnected the tract. This is called as lift surgery or ligation of intersphinctric fistula. So you can, this was a crude diagram. We'll go to a better version of the same. So this is the external opening. This is the internal opening here. The tract is running from the external opening. That is from the external sphincter up to the internal sphincter. An incision is placed. Once the incision is placed between the two sphincters, a probe is passed. And then the probe, the probe is passed and then the two, this is the track now. This is the only the track has been isolated. The two ends are transfixed between the external sphincter and internal sphincter. So the, here was the external sphincter, here is the internal sphincter. That all, all that has been removed. Now we are visualizing only the track. And this track is ligated on either side and the middle part of the track is cut and excised. Once that is done, Again, you can see the excise tract, the wound is closed. So that is called as ligation of intersphinctric fistula. It is done under spinal anesthesia in lithotomy position, transverse incision in the intersphinctric space, a dye is injected or a probe is passed through the external opening up to the internal uh, sphincter. The fistula tract is identified and ligated and the part, the external part, the external opening can be curated to excise how much of a tract that is possible from the anal canal, from the external skin up to the external sphincter. So that is what you call by as lift. There is a modified version of this 
called as WAFT. That is video assisted anal fistula tract ligation. So here again a specialized instrument like a camera probe is used to pass from the external sphincter into the internal sphincter. So under vision you are passing a small tiny camera with a long probe into the tract and you are visualizing the tract from the external opening to the internal opening and it is continuously irrigated and cauterized so that the entire tract is cauterized and it, the tract heals. So specialized endoscope pass through the outer opening into the fistula tract. Continuous irrigation of the tract. Tract is cleaned and wall is cauterized. Inner opening ligated through vicryl from luminal side. So you can see this is the device that is going from the external opening. It goes up to the internal opening. The entire tract is visualized. It is uh, the walls are cauterized and the fistula tract heals. So that was about low level fistula. Next we come to high level fistula. So these are the fistulas that open at or above the anorectal ring. So it actually the opening will be, will be in the rectum. These high level fistulas are very difficult to treat and recurrence also is very common. So this is the anorectal ring that forms the junction between the rectum and the surgical anal canal and the opening of these fistulas will be at or above the anorectal ring. So what are the common etiologies? The etiology can be the inflammatory bowel diseases that is Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, any trauma to the anorectal region, malignancies and presence of foreign bodies in the anorectal region. So again investigations like low level fistulas will do a barium enema. A colonoscopy becomes important here because you want to rule out any inflammatory bowel diseases or malignancy as well as biopsy if any of these is present. So treatment here unlike the simple fistulectomy, fistulotomy and lift procedures that we did for low level fistulas, these are high level fistulas, we will have to cut through sphincters and if you do so, patient will have incontinence. So here the treatment strategy is slightly different. We do a staged procedure, initial colostomy, that is you have to give rest to that part. As the stool passes through that same area where there is an internal opening that will never allow the fistula to heal. So first a colostomy is done, a diversion colostomy is done so that there is no fecal matter going to that area. This prevents sepsis so that recurrent infection because of passage of fecal matter is reduced and it helps in the healing. Then once the definitive procedure for uh, this high level fistula is done, the colostomy can be reversed, the colostomy can be closed. So what exactly is done here? So in high level fistulas, we do something called as seton treatment. So these setons are, now you can see this is the external opening, this is the internal opening. A seton is a fine thread that is passed from the external opening up to the internal opening and then it is interlocked. So it is interlocked. How does this help? This allows whatever pus or any other uh, fluid that is accumulated there to come out to the external opening. It does not, the thread does not allow the um, uh, external opening to close. So it remains patent and this is done over a period of time. There are two types of cetons will come to it. So first one is silk or linen ligature passed across the fistula tract and it is left in place with a tie. So what does it do? It creates ischemic necrosis. It creates ischemic necrosis and it divides the muscle slowly without allowing it to spring apart. It allows the fistula to granulate. Now you want granulation tissue to occur in that fistula tract so that the tract closes. Plus you don't want the external opening to close too early because that will again lead to the collection of pus. So this seton helps in both. One is it does not allow the external opening to close. Second one is it allows the fistula to granulate and heal from above and close completely. It takes a long time to heal and it is usually kept for around three months. So what are the two types of setons? There can be loose setons and cutting setons. So loose setons are the ones which has no tension. So it is not tied with tension. 
it is used in recurring fistulas and it forms a narrow tract. So it is loose seton. It is also called as draining seton. It drains and prevents the closure of the external opening. Loose seton, also called as draining seton, and it prevents the closure of external opening. It is just there. It is not doing anything else. You are not. Uh, the function is for it to drain whatever the collection is there and also to help in the formation of granulation tissue. Cutting cetons are the one which are tied with tension and progressively every time the patient comes to visit, uh, the ceton is tightened. When enclosed muscle is needed to cut, it is done when you need to cut the muscle. You can't cut the muscle at once, patient will have incontinence. It is progressively tightened and causes slow, slow controlled division of the fistula tract. May shorten the tract over a period of time. And once the tract is shortened, then you can do what the treatment that we had done for low level fistula, that is open fistulotomy. So this is how a seton is passed from the external opening, comes through the internal opening and then it is tight. So to summarize, fistula in ANO is an abnormal communication between the perianal skin and the anal canal. The fistula in ANO, the most common cause is a anorectal abscess which has opened up, opening into the anal canal as well as the skin. According to Park's classification, it is divided into interspintric, transpintric, extraspintric and supralevator fistulas and it is also divided into high and low level fistulas based on whether the internal opening is at or above the anorectal ring or below the anorectal ring. Low level fistulas are treated with fistulectomy, fistulotomy, lift procedures that is ligation of interspintric fistula tract and waft procedure that is video assisted fistula tract ligation. High level fistulas on the other hand which open at or above the anorectal ring require a staged procedure. Initial colostomy is done followed by definitive procedure using cetons. Cetons can be either loose cetons or tension cetons and these cetons help in the formation of granulation tissue within the tract as well as prevent the closing of the external opening so that the fistula heals.